the type of protein that is in cow's milk is completely or very different than the type of protein that is in human milk. And the cow's milk proteins cause a number of health problems in children. They're strongly associated with the development of juvenile diabetes if cow's milk is fed to kids before they're a year old. Uh, but beyond that, kids develop what's called cow's milk allergy, where they get rashes and breakouts and gastrointestinal distress. They can also develop uh, a type of an anemia that's associated with bleeding from their intestines due to an allergy to these cow's milk proteins. So cow's milk proteins are not meant for humans. They're meant for baby calves and should not be fed to human infants or children because they will cause problems. Furthermore, the type of fat that is in cow's milk is, again, very different from the type of fat that you find in human breast milk. You can make butter. You can make ice cream from cow's milk. You can't do that with human breast milk because the type of fat that is found in human breast milk is what's called unsaturated fat, whereas the type of fat that's in cow's milk is saturated fat, and that promotes uh, a hardening of the arteries and uh, uh, a number of other health problems that, again, our children should not be exposed so to. So the growth, the stimulation of the growth, I get it now why it's not for human children. So for human adults, we have a whole nother host of issues when exactly. cow's milk is stimulating growth when you're 40. Like, I don't really need any more stimulation of growth. Why am I drinking this material, if you will, is in, in your words? W but it can grow some pretty gnarly things in adult humans. What, is, what are some of those things? Right. Human cells should be in a quiet phase because we're basically we've reached our uh, uh, full uh, size. We are uh, uh, um, basically in a steady state system. When you bring in these uh, dairy proteins that start to stimulate these cells to try and grow, what that in essence does is it actually causes, can, it can cause the cells to become cancerous. Um, in, in particular, cow's milk is very high uh, in uh, protein, uh, amino acid, I'm sorry, excuse me, called leucine. High levels of leucine turn on a gene complex called TOR, T-O-R. TOR is associated with cancer development because those are growth genes. But again, in human adults, you really can't grow, but you can stimulate your cells to start growing abnormally, and that results in tumor formation. Um, uh, cow's milk uh, exposure to dairy uh, protein will also... Uh, elevate levels of uh, something called IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor, which again is associated with uh, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, but also cancer development. And this is especially problematic for uh, men and in particular African-American men because one of the most potent stimulators of prostate cancer that we know of is exposure to dairy foods and uh, 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 cow's milk. And uh, African-American men have a uh, pro uh, prostate cancer prevalence that's more than twice that of uh, Caucasian men. And once we develop prostate cancer, we are more than twice as likely to die from it because we tend to get much more aggressive uh, tum uh, types of prostate cancer than the uh, general population. My mother actually named me after her one and only brother. And my uncle, unfortunately, died from metastatic prostate cancer mm. in his late 50s. Mm. Um, so, and I've had several other friends who have either been stricken with it. Uh, I should hasten to say these are friends that ate meat and dairy who've been stricken with it or have unfortunately died from it. So this is a very serious problem. And when it comes to women, um, Dairy foods are associated with an elevated risk of both breast and ovarian cancer. And one of the things that I don't think most women think about is the fact that in order for a cow to produce milk, she's got to be pregnant 
and recently delivered, which means that her body is flooded with estrogens. And those estrogens come out in the milk and the other uh, and the foods that are made from the milk, like yogurt, cheese, and so forth. So you better watch that soy milk, though. Uh, I know she's joking because yeah. everyone's so afraid of soy milk because of the estrogens, but they're chugging that milk with no, full of no, pregnant cows. Estrogens are actually good, we, and we should talk about that because they're actually protective and protect right. women against breast cancer, protect men against prostate cancer. Hmm. Not only do they protect women against breast cancer, they also help women have stronger bones because there are two estrogen receptors uh, that the uh, um, the phytoestrogens bind to. This is soy we're talking to, about now. The, right, the soy uh, uh, plant estrogen. Let me say plant estrogens. I think that'll be clear for your listeners. So the plant estrogens will bind to uh, estrogen, estrogen, estrogen receptor one, which is where regular estrogen binds to, but they don't activate that receptor. They block it. And so what they are in essence doing is protecting the woman's tissues from overstimulation from actual estrogens. But then they do bind to the estrogen receptor two uh, and activate that receptor. And that's the receptor that helps women uh, absorb uh, more calcium into their skeleton and have stronger bones. So the phytoestrogens are doing exactly what they should be doing. They are protecting us against disease, but helping us. Now, to be one healthy. of the, I want to, I really want to talk about the government mm-hmm. and how they push dairy on us sure. and the history of that. They push, and so just to ask a question that kind of ties in the health um, things and the government, government pushes a lot that dairy is good for right. your bones. Can you talk to that and dispel that myth? Is dairy sure. good for your bones? Uh, I, let me take a drink of water because I really <laughs> want to talk about that. <laughs> okay, great. And then then I want to talk about institutionalized racism and how, because sure. it, it drives me crazy. So it's very, very important for well, people to know. What's actually, what's very interesting is that no government um, official site statement or information about uh, um, skeletal health will ever say that dairy foods build strong bones or dairy foods will make your bones stronger. And the government won't even permit the uh, dairy industry to say that because the studies have shown the exact opposite, that the most, the more dairy food a, a person or a woman drinks, for instance, the Harvard N- Nurses Health Study showed that the women who drank the most milk had the highest risk for skeletal, for hip fracture and other fractures. So dairy consumption is actually associated with weaker bones. Worldwide, when you look at per capita consumption of dairy, those countries that consume the most dairy foods have the highest rates of osteoporosis. So what the industry does is that it will say something along the lines of, in order to have a strong, strong bones, you need calcium. Dairy foods have calcium. So consume your dairy to get your calcium. But they, and they leave you to make the inference Mm -hmm. that dairy calcium will make, give you strong bones, but they will never say it because by law they can't say it because it's never been shown. So why doesn't it? Isn't there something to do with the acidity of? Exactly. uh, Dairy uh, foods, dairy, again, uh, foods are so high in animal protein that um, they cause the body to actually lose more calcium um, uh, from your bloodstream and skeleton than you can actually absorb from the milk. So it's it's a um, animal protein is associated with calcium loss that over time, uh, over a lifetime, will lead to weak bones um, because as we lose calcium, it's uh, uh, mobilized from our skeletons to keep uh, blood levels within a normal range, and over you know a period of decades, that will lead to significantly weaker bones. Uh, so dairy foods absolutely mm-hmm. do not build strong bones. Hey folks, okay, back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long, does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. 
Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.